It is. Okay. Thank you. All right. Well, back at it. Had a Sunday off because of the meetings. And uh, I'm, we've been doing a series uh, of lessons that are um, out of a church in Oklahoma. Uh, the pastor there, his name's Tommy C. Heigel. It's called The Journey into Overcoming. And it's uh, been looking at a lot of different uh, problems and things that face Christians and, uh, and just uh, everyday folks as well that, uh, that the Bible has a lot to say about and ways to, to uh, cope and deal with. Uh, this morning's lesson is lesson number eight in the series, and it's called Leaving Loneliness. Leaving Loneliness. Um, now, this is something I'm, you know, familiar with myself, uh, because when you have life issues, things come along, and sometimes you are left alone. It's interesting, oft times, so how music will reflect uh, on life's toughest problems. That's because it's an, uh, music is an emotional media, and uh, most of our problems involve emotions. How many hit songs about loneliness can you name? There are Only the Lonely by Roy Orbison, um, Mr. Lonely, Bobby Vinton, uh, as well as You Are, Are You Lonesome Tonight by Elvis, um, and I'm So Lonesome I Could Cry, you know, old Hank Williams, um, the older senior Hank Williams, of course, but... Uh, we uh, find out that sooner or later, each of us is confronted with the tough problem of loneliness. Sometimes we feel like what is described in Psalms 102, 7. Let's turn there quickly. One hundred two seven. Just bear with me. And we find in verse 7, the Bible says, I watch and am as a sparrow alone upon the housetop. That's a, a degree of loneliness that many of us, I think, have, have felt. Um, even though God is watching over us, we as humans tend to stray our attention away from uh, God's watchfulness and His care for us. And... This morning, this lesson will deal with how do, we deal, de, how do we leave loneliness, something that we can leave behind us. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we come to you, Lord, again, just so grateful to be in your house and, Lord, to have this opportunity to open up your word and, and examine it, Lord, for uh, help in uh, dealing with the problems of our daily lives. Lord, we just uh, know that oft times when we lose our sight on you, we can feel like we're bereft and alone and and left uh, uh, by ourselves. But we know that it's not true, Lord, and we thank you for your ever-presence in our lives and uh, in, our, in our hearts and our minds and our thoughts. We pray these things now in your son's precious name. Amen. All right, so King David wrote in Psalm 25, 16. Let's go there. These helpful little thumb things only get you to the book. Then you got all these chapters in between. 25 and uh, Psalm 25 and verse 16. Turn thee unto me and have mercy upon me. And here's the kicker here. For I am desolate and afflicted. So that's how you feel when you are uh, feeling alone and, and lonely. And... Uh, God has some answers for that. The, West, the word desolate here means lonely or isolated. And loneliness is difficult to explain or define, but it is technically or basically feeling isolated even when we're surrounded by people. I think the, there was the Beatles that had a song, All the Lonely People. Where do they, come, where do they all come from? Um, well, they're out there. Um, 
even when, uh, we feel unneeded and unwanted, and that is loneliness. Psalm 142.4, turning back to the Psalms again. 142 and 4. And it says, I looked on my right hand and beheld, but there was no man that would know me. Refuge failed me. No man cared for my soul. That sounds like desperation right there. Um, let's look at some of the reasons for loneliness and the remedies for loneliness, because they are there and they're identified in, in Scripture. There are five reasons for home, loneliness. Number one reason is moving. People get lonely when they relocate and they don't know any place, anybody in that new place. As Americans, we move around a lot. We know this and we see this in, in our companies and the, the, in our workplace. Folks are constantly on the move. Many people feel they have no permanent roots or friends. About 20% of Americans move every year, which means digging up those roots and hoping they can be successfully transplanted in a new place. When we relocate, the first few months or even a year are really lonely. The loneliest times I've had in my life had nothing to do with moving. Well, maybe it had something to do with moving, somebody moving on, somebody passing away. Um, but uh, that's not the, the direct focus of this point in the lesson, but in my life, that was the loneliest time I've had, um, is when my late wife passed away. Um, it seemed I was completely by myself, despite having a daughter living next door to me and having five grandchildren over there in that house. Um, I spent every day doing what I always do. I go, went to work. I worked and I worked and I worked and I traveled. I went to, uh, I managed a program in uh, Central Europe and Central Asia uh, for the Department of Energy uh, through the uh, National Laboratory System. So moving was what kept me, it's moving in a different light than just moving to a new location, but moving is what kept me going subsequent to Capri's death. Um, it was a, I didn't really realize how bleak I felt until the Lord sent someone else into my life. And then it was like, wow, I still am alive. I still have uh, thoughts, and, and I, I really cared about my children and my grandchildren. And so that helped me through that point. For, for most people, the worst time is being the new person in a new neighborhood or in a new church. Um, Home, uh, when they move to the area. The best time to invite people to church is when they are new uh, to the community because they are lonely and want to make new friends. Uh, we should be sensitive and try to meet that need and remember that what Jesus said in Matthew 25, 35. Oops. Excuse me while I reach here. Some of the longest chapters in Matthew, the last three or four. <laughs> yeah. For I was in hungered, and you gave me meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. <laughs> it's Jesus showing us that these are the things that we need to focus on when we're talking about our our Christian life and our Christian communities, looking out for the needs of others. And you, see, you might say, as they did in the, in the, well, when did we do this? To, when did we do these things, Lord? And he says, in as much, he says, the king shall answer and say unto them, verily I say unto you, in as much as ye have done it unto one of the least of these, my brother, my brethren, you have done it unto me. So that is how, even though Christ is not physically in our presence, 
we can do those things that were mentioned in Matthew 25 uh, that he told us we should do. Um, now, the second point here under, under the uh, reasons for loneliness is debt. Debt. Who has debt? Anybody have debt here in this room? I imagine some people have debt. I, I personally have, in April and I, we have poquito. You know, we have some debt, but it's, praise the Lord, it's, it's, we we're approaching its maturity. And we're not going to have that debt any longer, and that's, that's a blessing to us. Many of us are so busy trying to succeed or look successful that we go into debt trying to keep up with uh, those people named Jones. I've known some people named Jones, and they weren't necessarily ahead. Um, you know, like everybody always talks about trying to keep up with the Joneses. Um, but the average American couple owes more than $8,500 in credit card debt. Think about that for a second. When you're making $15 an hour, and maybe your spouse is making $15, so a combined $30 an hour, you're living on tomorrow's production. You're not. You're 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 using that credit card as a crutch to carry you through. Uh, not include that doesn't include their rent, their house payments, etc. We're so busy busy accumulating stuff and paying it off, we don't have time to make friends. This is what leaves us lonely, and 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 folks that uh, are having these issues. Um, feeling lonely and being uh, left on their own. Uh, have you noticed the amount of these uh, storage units that have been going up all across our county here? And they're, they're going up everywhere. I'm sure they're in Minnesota by the th thousands. Um, but that's just to store the stuff that we don't have room in our present abode so what's so important about that stuff? It's not in our presence. It's not in our daily life. It's just stuff. The focus is on the material. So doing all that work to pay off the stuff, consequently, uh, we pay the price with loneliness. What does Proverbs 27, 6 tell us? Let's take a look there quickly. Proverbs... Twenty-seven, six. Faithful are the wounds of a friend, but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. Hmm. Let's break that down a little bit. This means a true friend is going to tell us the hard things, the things we don't want to hear. Not what we need. What not? We're going to be told what we need to hear, not what we want to hear, by our friends. True friends tell us the truth about our working too much, our debt problems, or when we are about to make a bad financial decision. That's a good friend. They care enough about you to try to prevent you from a stumbling block or something, something that's going to draw your attention away from your Christian life and uh, towards just making money to keep bringing in this stuff. Um, so keep your friends close. What was the old saying? Keep your friends close, but keep your enemies closer. Uh, <laughs> and that's uh, the, the kind of the uh, style of the, uh, the warlords like uh, our good friend Putin in Russia. Uh, he's, he's a guy that if you let him stray off, he goes and gets into all kind of trouble. Uh, just using Ukraine as an example. But anyway, I'm sure that in his life he's fairly lonely with all the meanness that he has going on. Third, death. Death causes loneliness. I kind of touched on this a little bit earlier. Uh, one of the hardest things to deal with is uh, the loss of someone that's close to you. Many people have full, wonderful marriages, last 30, 40, 50, 60, and even more uh, years. Then suddenly death ends the marriage. I've dealt with this. Others here I know have dealt with this. Um, 
you can imagine, those that haven't dealt with it, the emptiness, the loneliness, losing your soulmate uh, and spouse of a lifetime. I, I, I can't imagine it because, uh, like I said, it happened to me, and it's something I don't want to have a repeat. But I know that for all the good things we have in this life, the things that God gives us in, 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 for us to enjoy, there is, because of sin, that payday that we all face. And one of those things is death. And um, so people that are left behind um, are often uh, left with feelings of, um, well, not desertion because they know there's no option on the part of their loved one, but with the feelings that you get from being isolated and alone. One of the saddest passages in the Bible is when Sarah, Abraham's beloved wife of 60 years, passes away. Uh, if we look over in Genesis 23, 2. Uh, 23, 2. Um, and Sarah died in Kerjatharba, the, name, the same as Hebron in the land of Canaan. And Abraham came to mourn for Sarah and to weep for her. Um, I, I, I can relate to these feelings. The two words that are used here to describe Abraham's grief are very revealing. The Hebrew word translated mourn, safad, uh, means to um, lament and wail. So we know Jeremiah lamented, uh, but that's... Uh, you, Basically, you're left in, in such grief that you, you, you can't, it's uncontrollable shedding of tears. Um, only those who have experienced it know the loneliness um, that the death of a spouse can bring. And I think we've probably said enough about that subject. But that is one of the five, uh, is death of a, of a, of a spouse. And then the one that is based on our own um, unforgiveness, the things that chide in our heart, we struggle with. Uh, when people go through a divorce, divorce causes loneliness. Uh, they, people that go through a divorce experience grief similar to that of those who have lost their spouses to death. Divorce is actually the death of a relationship. Remember, when two are joined together, they become one. And how do you just physically remove from that oneness? It's got to be completely shattering for the one who is not desirous of ending the relationship. Um, accompanying the tremendous loneliness and, and hurt that's caused by divorce are feelings of failure, rejection, and many other terrible byproducts. If we look at Malachi, um, 20, well, 2, excuse me, Malachi 2, 16. We find. There we go. All the way to the end of the Old Testament. Malachi 2, verse 16. For the Lord, the God of Israel, saith that he hateth putting away. For one covereth violence with his garment, saith the Lord of hosts. Therefore, take heed to your spirit that you deal not treacherously. So God doesn't like divorce. God knows the hurt that divorce causes. That putting away, that's... Uh, it's unkind. However, he loves the people even though they are divorced. Um, we go to Luke um, 6.37. Luke 6.37. Um, 
Judge not, and ye shall not be judged. Condemn not, and ye shall not be condemned. Forgive, and ye shall be forgiven. So in, God would prefer that um, divorce didn't occur. But then he says, but forgive. And forgiveness is always one of those things that's uh, oftentimes hard for us in our flesh to, um, to do. Um, our flesh, tell, you know, in the flesh, we're, we're hurt, we're mad, we want, we want uh, I won't say vengeance, but something akin to that. You'd like to, to uh, do something to the other person, I suppose. <laughs> but that's not what God wants us to do. He wants us to forgive. We need to remember the, those words there in Luke. Judge not, and ye shall not be judged. Aging causes loneliness. As we grow older, um, you know, we've give, have given our lives um, in the nurture and admonition of our children. Uh, senior adults often find their children don't have much time for them. It's a joy to see you here this morning with your mother. Absolutely. Yes. I, I, this is dead on for what this um, lesson is teaching. Uh, one of the loneliest feelings is the word is not feeling needed as parents anymore. Uh, in addition, many friends of seniors are either in nursing homes uh, or have passed from this life. So it seems like, well, it's, it's a fact. As you grow older, your friends pass away, pass on, and you're left, um, seems like a shrinking pool of people that are your close friends and the people that you love. Um, it's, it's just a fact. I, that's where the church absolutely comes in with our caring for one another. Um, a lot of folks wonder why God allows them to linger in this life as the golden years sometimes seem more uh, like the broken years. Bible teaches senior adults are to be honored, cherished, and respected. Let's look at 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy. And 5.1. Rebuke not an elder, but entreat him as a father, and the younger men as brethren. It also says in the next verse um, that we're to to, uh, to treat the elder women as mothers, the younger as sisters, and with all purity. So we're to treat senior adults as Beloved fathers and mothers. That brings the case, to us to the case, where the Fifth Amendment applies, if I'm not mistaken. Um, if we're to view them as honored mothers and fathers, um, Exodus uh, 20 and 12 uh, the, the, has, it contains the Fifth Commandment. Honor your father and mother so that your days upon the land that has been given to you will be long. Um, we're commanded then to respect the senior members and to treat them uh, with all the dignity and regard that we would our own fathers and mothers. That's a, a strong admonition for us as the church. We need to pay attention to those who are um, in this point in their life and provide them with a, a support structure that um, adequately uh, looks after their, their near needs and the, the, their emotional well-being as well. And the Hebrew word translated uh, honor here is kabod, mean, meaning to glorify or promote. It's the idea of high regard and great respect. Seniors are to be treated with love, respect, and honor. 
So in review, the five reasons for loneliness are moving, debt, death, divorce, and aging. Now let's look at the remedies for loneliness. One, realize God loves you unconditionally. I don't think we have a problem with understanding that here at Grace Baptist Church, but there are a lot of folks out there in the world that have a real problem with understanding this uh, point. We all have basic emotional needs. The most important one is unconditional love and acceptance. Loneliness is the result of feeling un. Go back to Jeremiah. Thirty-one. No, that's thirty-three. Not thirty-three. Three. Uh, oh, another uh, thirty-one. Three. Okay. The Lord hath appeared of old unto me, saying, "Yea." I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. Loneliness is often a sign. We have forgotten how much God loves us and how long he will love us. He loves us with an everlasting love, which means his love for us will never change regardless of what we do or don't do. Second remedy, establish a network of Christian friends. God knows we all get lonely. That's one reason he established the local church. A local church offers a wide range of ways for us to connect with other Christians. In any church, the best places to meet to make friends are Sunday school classes or small groups. Um, another great place is if you're musically uh, directed is maybe the choir um, or of course the, the preacher here thinks that you should have a praise team. Uh, I, I know where we stand there, Pastor, so <laughs> we won't have a rock and roll band up here, but uh, anyway, music is a good place uh, to make friends. Uh, we won't make any many new friends if we just come to worship services. Statistics reveal if we don't get involved in Sunday school or small groups where we can make friends, in two years we will probably drop out of church. That seems rather fleshly, doesn't it? Um, we need a network of Christian friends because the Bible teaches if we fall, a friend can help us up. That's in Ecclesiastes 4.10. Let me turn over there quickly. Ecclesiastes. Right there. Second book of Solomon. <laughs> Ecclesiastes 4 10. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him that is alone when he falleth, for he hath not another to help him up. That's why we need friends. Now, let's go to the third uh, remedy. Identify and sympathize with those who are lonely. When we are lonely, this is going to sound rough. We need to stop whining. <laughs> I'm lonely. I'm so bereft. I'm just left alone. Nobody loves me. Um, <laughs> why? Lord, I'm so lonely. And start praying, Lord, help me be a friend to someone who is lonely. Loneliness is a choice. It is a choice to think only of ourselves. Every Sunday, there are many lonely people in Bible study and church services the first thing we should do each Sunday morning is ask God to help us identify and sympathize with a lonely person. At every service, 
There are a lot of sheep who have wandered off into loneliness. Jesus asked if a man owns a hundred sheep, what do we think he would do if one of them wanders off? Matthew 18, 12. Matthew 18. Oop. How think ye, if a man have an hundred sheep, and one of them be gone astray, doth he not leave the ninety and nine, and goeth into the mountains, and seeketh that which is gone astray? Hmm. That, that does seem to be what he's telling us to do. Um, it is our natural tendency to gravitate to our friends every Sunday, and miss that person who is incredibly lonely because of Moving, debt, death, divorce, aging. There's a, probably 10 more uh, that we could imagine. It's our natural. Um, beginning this Sunday, ask God to help you identify and sympathize with those who are lonely. Also remember what the beatitude of Jesus, uh, if we turn to Acts 20.35, it mentions a beatitude there. And 35. All right, here we go. I have showed you all things, how that so laboring ye ought to support the weak and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus how he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. So after you identify and sympathize with those who are lonely, take the next step to minister with a warm handshake and friendly conversation. Genuine conversation is one of the best cures for the feeling of loneliness that others have. Eye contact, firm handshake, warmth, in your, in your uh, meeting these people and to make them know that God does love them through the love he's manifesting from you. Um, the best way to start is by asking questions about them. Where are they from? What do they do? Where do they live? Do they have children? Etc. Let the love of Jesus Christ flow through you by showing genuine concern for them and you will begin to get your compass set toward leaving loneliness. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you for this lesson this morning.